Hoping with John Moxley versus Mance Warner. We did a big speech about John Moxley the other day about how great he is. You're not really supposed to bleed in every single solitary match that you do, but he does. He got a hard way from the DDT. I just assumed that he gigged and he's out of blood. <laughs> Jacob says forehead. he's probably going to bleed in the match with Jericho this You don't say. <laughs> if he doesn't bleed Wednesday, then I'm going to be concerned for his health. The factory... Tried to offer protection, including Nick Camarado and his wacky new look. Yeah, what's up with that? That's a good question. This women's division is a sh in a shambles. I mean, even before Triple H took over, AW was way behind when it came to the women's division. And uh, now they're going to be even further and further behind. So there's like two options. It's either you just give up and that's it. And then deal with the blowback when fans point out the, how weak your women's division is. Or you need to, like, start now. This fucking main event. Oh, my God. Claudio Castagnoli and Kanosuke Takeshita. They got two standing ovations in this match. Two! They deserved it. The only reason Takeshita is on this show at all is because, theoretically, he is on excursion. He is here to learn how to work. Sounds like everyone else is on excursion working with him. <laughs> I think so. This was a tremendous wrestling match. What's this Takeshita's contractual status right about now? Is he available? Can we sign this guy already? You, you think? Jiminy Christmas. Somebody get this guy! She wrote Ric Flair's last match poetry. Brian? Yes, Granny. I heard that Ric Flair said he liked his last match. Yeah, he said he, he, said he really liked the last match, but he didn't remember any of it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I bet he's had a lot of nights he liked he didn't remember very I, well. I mean, I guess. The crowd was there. Ric struggled to be. Passed out, he stared. At the ceiling, probably. I didn't laugh. I didn't <laughs> laugh. I went all the way through. Oh, God. Don't want to read this. Think about this. Rick would always whip it out. Hmm. And by that, I mean have a really good bout. In his matches, he was always bleeding. At home, he liked to always practice breeding. <laughs> I agree. Like he's cackling. <laughs> I did get to watch Rick's last match. You did? But I, I kind of forgot all about it. I know he had a bloody face. Are you sure it was his last match <laughs> or just one of 8,000 yeah, matches? Get me off of here. All right, get out of here. Adios. Granny was paused with a shocked look on her face. Really, the very first offensive maneuver on this entire program was one man slicing another open with thumbtacks. And this coffin is, it was like the game of, uh, uh, what was that old game where you try to use that thing, Operation? Operation. It's like game of Operation. He just exactly fits into this coffin. We've been talking about these trios tournaments for a long time. I mean, granted, some guys are hurt. Not the most impressive brackets I ever saw. Who the hell are the trust busters? Hangman will be managing the Dark Order against the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. That's the only thing that makes sense is like a big story here. Only one woman gets to touch me, he says, and you are not her. Bro, is this wife ever coming in or what? I don't know. I feel like I feel like he's just cutting his own promos trying to get her a job. <laughs> Tony's just like, ain't happening, buddy. I love how Harlan's gimmick is essentially exactly the same except he has hair. Or as I like to call him now, Harlan. That's pretty he's cool. Got, he's got hair now. That's you know very clever. Yeah. Madison Ray versus Jade Cargill. Not good at all. This is one of Jericho's best AEW matches, and uh, Moxley continues to be the runaway leader for Wrestler of the Year. But dude, when CM Punk came out, I have zero idea right now who's going to win that match. It feels like a match neither guy should lose, and it's going to be a big, big, big fucking deal. To be honest, they owe Moxley, because he he stepped in when when Punk went down, and he carried this fucking promotion for the entire summer. And he, I think he deserves better than just, ah, we're going to do a match, Punk wins. Move on to whatever's next. Moxley will do some tags or whatever. That would be lame to me. So we recap. Caden and Katana. Katana Chance. Katana Chance! Winning the tag team titles last week. Trick Williams doing his, his Ollie shtick. Float like a butterfly. Cry like Wesley. I laughed. You're not going to talk about the fucking cannonball in the corner, bro? I mean, everybody freaked out over this move. People get, uh... They get fixated on botched single spots. Hey, look at this. Never happened before. And I hung up on him. Classic. I've been doing this for 25 years.
everybody fucking botches a spot here and there. He appears behind Carmelo, but he just waits for Carmelo to turn around and then turns to the camera and gives a thumbs up. And they do the still shot. Oh, man. What a what a fucking crew. Lash legend and pretty deadly. That's a main roster act. Next week, you will come with me to find balance. I am so fucking excited. Balance and perspective. <laughs> so excited. Sanga, Ulyssa Leon, and Valentina Farah. Sanga is the best fucking babyface in this business. True. Find true. me a better one. No. There, that doesn't exist. He's so great. I like to listen to rock music, she says. Rock music is the soundtrack of my life. Rock music speaks to me. It doesn't give a damn about who you are. I'm about to throw up, dude. And we shatter your false reality. She's got to beat Mandy. It's time. Oh, for God's sake. It's way past time. She's over. It's a good story. Mandy needs to just uh, do something else for a while, go to the main roster or something. I would say the show is, it's it's getting to be a decent show every week. This show was good. I would say this show gets a thumbs up. Not perfect, but I, I had fun watching it for the most part. 